right, so I'm Darren, Fish Donkey. Um, we have a mobile app for running fishing tournaments. So you can run a complete fishing tournament on your mobile phone, take all the photos, everything, and we control, control and run tournaments on our, on our phone. Uh, we started this company in June of 2016. We worked on the app. We have an iPhone app and an Android app and a website and then a backend database. So it took almost a year to get going. At the end of July last year, we released our software and we immediately did a couple paid tournaments. Uh, and then, you know, you start to get winter. We've done about, uh, right now we have 10 live tournaments that you can join on our site uh, for next summer, including a large one that's coming up in Voyagers National Park. Uh, we are a self-funded company with no investors. Uh, we've used a lot of subcontractors to help build the software. Uh, we have two teams in Poland. And I'm founder, Darren, uh, Bachelor of Science in Engineering from Minnesota, and then an MBA in New Ventures from MIT. And the first thing I want to tell you about is, uh, it's a conservation aspect to this. And it's tournament software, and I, I immediately thought, you know, well, this catch and release it does have a conservation aspect, but it's it's actually a lot more than that because the more I learned about it, the more I talked to people. Uh, <clears throat> fishing tournaments damage fish a lot more than you think, and it's not just the fish that die while you're catching them. It's a, it's putting them in the live well and then bringing them around for most of the day and then having this weigh in at the end of the day. And the state of Minnesota says it's 20% die. It's not, it's not, they don't die immediately because it's a live weigh in. They die within five or six days afterwards. And uh, this is from a Texas study in 2012 and they did largemouth bass, which are very hardy fish. 40% uh, overall of the weigh in fish died, it's 38.2. Um, but the thing that was really stood out to me is you're out there trying to catch the largest fish in your tournaments and you're bringing those back to the weigh-in area and they did side by side a catch and release and a weigh-in tournament. Above slot fish, fish which is our, are your largest fish, 100% of the weigh-in fish died, 0% of the catch and release died, and then you've got your slot fish which are also your large fish, 46% of weigh-in slot fish died. 0% uh, catch and release. They had special, they had special permission uh, by the state, their DNR, to keep slot fish for this tournament as a part of the study. What's a slot fish? Slot fish, oh no. A slot fish is just, uh, so the state of Minnesota uh, has, uh, say, say walleyes, uh, anything from, uh, depending on the lake, 18 inches to 28 inches must be immediately released. So if you're fishing in a tournament uh, and you're catching walleyes, if you catch a fish between 18 and 28 inches, immediately it needs to be released and it doesn't ever get weighed in in a tournament, it's just released. And yeah, that's the slot. And so uh, with fish donkey, actually, you can measure slot fish. And we'll get into that. So um, we're saying you should use length and not weight for tournament fishing. And I think when, when, as we go further on in the future, this is the way of the future, we will be using length instead of weight. Just, it just makes so much more sense. And like children today who grew up and become tournament fishing will look back and say, why were we ever weighing fish? Why were we capturing them and then taking them around with us and then bringing them back to this one location to be measured by weight? When it doesn't make sense, we don't need to do it. Um, already regulations are in inches, and we're already talking a lot about inches. Even when we talked about the slot limit just now, we talked about inches. Fishermen keep boards in their boat and they measure their fish by inches. Um, you know, then, and I already mentioned the way in brings fish to one spot of the lake. Uh, if we go by length, we're going to reduce fish mortality, uh, and that gets worse with warmer temperatures. Um, also, the whole, the whole process of running a weigh station, there's there's a lot of people and a lot of volunteers involved and there's these big tanks of water and the fishermen are taking these fish and they're dumping them into tanks and then they're taking them and they're running and keeping them in, they're trying to keep the fish fresh and alive so that they can be weighed. And so this whole thing, uh, running calibrated weight station and weight station and all that can be eliminated if you do it by length and do it right away on the lake. And uh, with a length of tournament, there's no need to officially check all submissions. With a weight tournament, you need to weigh every single fish and get it on a leaderboard. With a length tournament, you don't need to officially check every fish. People are going to self-report if they've got a small fish, they're going to self-report it. If they're not a winner, you don't need to 
we need to verify that question. Um, results are automatically updated uh, by the software, so tournament results are immediately available. So if we go to catch and release, one of the reasons why we're currently doing way tournaments is because there are these problems with catch and release. And as you can see, like these lips look suspicious <laughs> on this photo. Now, if you are running a traditional tournament and you go to catch and release, uh, the difference is <laughs> with a traditional catch and release tournament, people could just hand in an old photo or they could alter the photo. But if we use our app, we take all photos through the app. So you don't just use your camera and take photos and then turn these things in. You take the photos through the app. So now we control it. We can immediately encrypt the photo, make sure there's no changes to it digitally. No one can change one little thing about it. We also have uh, you know, time and location, this kind of information along with it. And so we know where you were. We know that you know, you, you're not cheating. You're not able to change the photo. And that's a big thing. Um, the other thing is, if you want to do uh, a stringer or a big limit tournament, where say you catch five bass or ten bass, uh, if if you do it with a traditional tournament uh, of catch and release, people could just take a photo of a fish, throw in the live well, half an hour later, take it out, take another photo of it, and and hand in and say, oh, yeah, well, I caught I caught two identical 22 inch fish. Um, but what we have with the app is. As a part of the app, we have a video release. So you take a, you take your photos of the fish, and then you take a video of the release, and you know the fish is gone. We've saw it swim away. So and we know what time it was, where it was. Everything is a part of the submission. Um, so that's the advantages of fish donkey over traditional catch and release. Uh, you know, and then the other thing is over traditional tournaments, just in general, uh, if you're going to run a long contest, there's a lot of time spent collecting photos. Uh, from email, uh, sorting these things, putting them on a leaderboard. All of this stuff happens automatically when you use the app. Someone just submits a fish and it's all sorted automatically put on the leaderboard. Um, so right here is, uh, this is a, an example of one of our leaderboards. Uh, this was a largest walleye and solder tournament, a catch and release tournament. Um, what we have is, this is what a fisherman sees as soon as they turn on uh, their phone and they open up the app. If they're in a tournament, it immediately goes to the leaderboard. Um, there's a button here for them to enter a fish, and it, you know it shows uh, current leaders. Anybody can click on any of those, and it'll show the fish. Click on Nick Nissen's fish, you'll be able to see it's a 15 and a half inch fish. You can zoom in incredibly. You can you can you can see everything about it. Um, and then as a tournament host, you have these options of verifying a fish. Every fish is just initially put on the leaderboard is unverified. Um, they have the option to deny it or verify it and check out all of the fish. We're finding that this changes the market for tournaments. Like currently, uh, there's 104,000 participants in the state of Minnesota in fishing tournaments, but this also opens it up to unofficial tournaments and contests, like summer long contests. Um, almost virtual tournaments. You could do a year-long tournament. You can do a countrywide, you know, tournament or a contest. And you can you can use it as a way to promote your business. We have a lot of ways to work sponsors back into promoting the app. I mean, using the app to promote sponsors. As far as uh, how we make money, it's free to create a tournament because we want people to use the app. And we think uh, there's a networking effect to it. Once you use the app, then you start seeing how I could use this to run my own tournament or my own contest. Um, so it's free to create and run a tournament. And then we have free tournaments and paid tournaments. If it's a free tournament, everything's free. It's free for you to create it, and it's free for your participants to use it. If it's a paid tournament, then we have a fee. It's kind of like the Eventbrite model where if it's a $20 tournament, we add it's uh, $1 plus 5%, which comes to $2. If it's more than $20, then the fee changes a little bit. But so that's how we make our money is we take this $2 fee. So a $20 tournament, the tournament gets $20, we get $2, and the fisherman pays $22. And, uh, and that's 
Uh, that's all I have for you. I have some, uh, want to open it up. Uh, I'd like from you all as if you know tournament directors or people who are interested in fishing in tournaments. Uh, we have some cards here for our demo tourney and we have some real prizes in it. Uh, I'll pass out some of these cards. You can join our tournament, use the app, try it out. And if you know people who run tournaments, then uh, please tell them about it and, uh, and tell them about the demo tourney. They can try it out and maybe they'll set up a tournament also. Very good. Questions? Go ahead. Uh, Eric. How are you collecting feedback from people in the field? Like how they use your app and stuff? How are we collecting feedback from people who are actually using it? So, we're not. Um, <laughs> other than they're able to contact me through social media and, or, or through the app or by email. So if they have trouble, they contact us. Now, if they don't, have trouble we don't really know a lot of times um we've been you know we're just starting out with tournaments so we're not doing like hundreds of tournaments a day so it's still small enough that we can contact people and ask them you know hey you have any questions and how's it going um so we're getting feedback like that you know we're really working with early adopters like why um, observe them okay. there are some ways that you can collect feedback there's some companies that do user data testing and i've looked at it uh actually signed up for it I haven't done it, but they'll actually take and set up a tournament for you, and they'll have, uh, you know, the ten people who they have in there you know, set up. They'll pay them, and they'll try it, and then they'll give you feedback. And you can look at it and see, like, you know, you can look back at the data and see, like, where did they get stuck if they got stuck on something, uh, things like that. But right now, it's more, it's still small enough that we're just working on it, kind of a early adopters and working closely with people who are using it. Uh, in the back. What's your what's the extent of your testing so far? Have you had user units? Yeah, so we released the app uh, last July, and so we've run many tournaments uh, already. Currently, we had uh, is nine or ten this morning when I looked at it. Uh, you could download our app and join one of these tournaments that are running. They're not all paid. Some of them, I think it was about 50-50 as far as paid tournaments versus free tournaments. And the people who are doing free tournaments are really kind of just checking it out, I believe. Yes. What are the other problems with so far with it? So, <clears throat> you know, there's a long lead time to big tournaments. And the guys who run tournaments are like my age and older. And they don't immediately get it that like we should use an app to run our tournament. They know it. Like if I talk to them, they're like, "Oh, this is this is great." And then they kind of, like, "What do I do? You know, what, what do I do with this? Like, how is how is this going to be so different?" But really, it's not really that different. But just like getting them to see, like, yeah, we we can we can run your whole tournament by link. You don't need to do it by weight. And it's just that small change. Um, which I think the market is ready for that to happen because now we have the technology for it. Um, but that, and that in, in with the lead time is slowing us down and getting started. But I think there's this huge network effect that it can just take off. I mean, this morning I was, I was quite happy when I, I just looked a couple of days ago and now there's all of a sudden there's, you know, there's more tournaments on the board. People we don't even know and haven't really contacted. Two questions. So, your app can actually measure the fish like real time with some sort of activity? So, we didn't work on that technology, but there's some of that out there. Um, and so, we don't. Uh, so have but we have the option. Back? What we do is we put it on a, on a measuring board, touch the fish's nose to the board, and take a photo of it. So, we ask that you take a photo of the person holding the fish, and that's for promotional purposes after the tournament and identify who it is. And then you take photos of it on the measuring board, which can be zoomed way in and people can verify where's the tail touching on the board. Um, but we don't do the, the automated species identification or like, although I think in the future it's possible. And it's something actually that we're covering with our, with our future. Okay. Yes. Do you only do yours with measuring? You won't do it with weight or you can't do it with it's weight? It's possible to do it with weight. What we did was we left it as a unitless measurement 
And so as you when you define your tournament, it just says enter the units. So if you want to do it by weight, um, it's no problem to weigh the fish and, and enter those onto the leaderboard. Then you'd have to decide as a tournament director, do we run a weigh station and bring these fish back in and you know potentially harm some of them? Or are we going to do some of these? Uh, uh, there's also like specialized scales. You'd have to give a, a certified scale to each boat, let them measure it on the boat and release it. But these things uh, do exist. It just adds a little bit more to the cost of running your tournament. Maybe one more question. Let's go. Go ahead. Yes. Uh, are you once this gets going? Have you thought about branching into other areas like uh, hunting tournaments? Uh, there's a big bug contest in the fall every year, or you know, any other kind of species you thought about going that route as well? Um, so there was some initial thought about that, uh, and it kind of became more specialized in fishing. Um, but certainly it would be possible to take the back end and, and do some of that. And um, already we actually have something really interesting for sponsors. So because it's got a lot of flexibility, you can, um, instead of just defining fish, so like we did a walleye and sauger board, uh, you can do multi-species and so you can add something like you can define your when it says to define the fish you can just call it uh, sponsor photo and so now as a part of your tournament you can take all of your sponsors and they can they can they can take these requirements and say I'm Amy's ice cream shop I want someone from the from the contest the summer long contest to come to my ice cream shop and take a photo in the shop and so now we can use the phone to go to Amy's ice cream shop and take a selfie or whatever at the shop and put that onto this leaderboard. So we'll have this sponsor photo leaderboard. And at the end of the tournament, we have a, a, a category called wild card. The tournament director just hits shuffle. It'll automatically take that whole leaderboard, shuffle it and pick a winner. And so now we can take all of our sponsors and we can have, we can have uh, sponsor visits or other requirements that they want to add to the tournament. So. It's like a contingency sponsor relationship that they have with pro fishermen in pro tournaments. We can do a lot of that with local tournaments and local businesses and have uh, local visits. And so that kind of, you know, hunting right now, it's, it's, really, it's really fishing, um, but you could do some of that. Uh, and it's, it's got enough flexibility built into it that it wouldn't be a big stretch to make that change. All right, one more. Uh, what's been your marketing and advertising strategy so far? It's just been word of mouth and uh, hoping people search for it in the app store? Yes, and then social media. And so um, also, uh, you know, there's a, a you can you find tournaments and you can contact the directors and so you can talk to them that way. Um, and then we're going to the, uh, so like this weekend coming up is the Muskie Expo at Concordia. We're going there and we're gonna have a booth and we're gonna to talk to people. This is a great fit for muskies because you don't wanna put muskies in the live well anyway, they don't fit. Um, and then we're gonna to go to the Northwest Sports Show coming up in uh, Minneapolis. That's a large one, the Progressive Northwest Sports Show. And just talk to more people, people who are involved with fishing. Um, that and then you know, social platforms like on Facebook, there's a lot of uh, fishing groups. Uh, I'm not tied into a lot of the fishing community. Um, I've kind of been awake away from it for a long time. Uh, so I need to get more tied into meeting more people and that's a good way to do it is in these large fishing groups. There's a lot of people who are out there participating and running tournaments who belong to those groups. But that's been it. As far as advertising, uh, none. Um, other than, you know, now we have the demo tournament and there's real prizes in here that people, this is this is uh, something, you know, that we're splashing all over on social media where you'll be promoting this at those events that are coming up. Uh, and then, you know, right now, I think there were there were 47 people who just started, 47 people had signed up for this uh, as of this morning. Um, and I think as the year goes on, we'll have a lot more people signed up and using the app through that. All right, let's give Darren a round of applause.